I stand here now, before the glowing embers of a dying garbage can fire, and I see in them a memory, the flames of the end. I huddle for warmth, shoulder to shoulder, with others like me, the wayward survivors and stragglers, all silent in mourning, for in a world with no future, what is there to do but remember? And so we recall each day, the hour of our reckoning. We remember judgment, and the beginning of the end. Our leaders had betrayed us. Their greed and arrogance withdrew them from behind their walls of ivory towers and manors. Havens from which they decided our fates and took the wealth of the people. When the cost of living surpassed the average income, when the lawmakers held themselves above their mandates, the illusion fell away. Placated idolence gave way to a storm of rage, and so it began. On the first day did the sky part, and all heard the voice of angels, and the hurtling of sound of golden trumpets. And he rode through for all to see, a great and dark champion, astride a steed of flame and ash. He held at his side a shield of gold, and held aloft a burning sword of gilded silver, and draped it the holy words. And thus he spoke unto the whole of the world. I am the first of four. By his decree, do I bring the spirit of strife and unrest to sunder the union of men. Thrones of all kings shall fall. Crowns cast at the feet of the Father. And so will every man and woman be stripped of their honor. The earth will wash in the blood and tears of battle till not remains a single village, and so it shall be, for I am called war. For all the anger already in our hearts, the writer's clarion called stirred something primal deep within our very nature. It came first as protest at the doors of corporate and government estates, then at the homes of their authorities. Soon, it dissolved into chaos and violence without direction, and the common man cast their stone to the house of the rich and powerful. Our world fell into an age of chaos and malcontent, honest work abandoned, riots and looting for survival. The yen, the euro, and the dollar all burned, and with them fell the economy that tied us together. Martial law cracked at the seams when the pyramids of power fell, when their wealth became hollow and meaningless, and the guns of peace officers and soldiers turned on their employers. We burned the flags of our former allegiance. The common citizen abandoned civility in favor of personal interest. Those who had ever fought in a war in their lives took up arms and dismantled the forums of political influence, united only beneath a black banner, the fret of sovereignty. And so, the legacy of human civilization dissolved in a hail of gunfire and the agony of war, leaving behind nothing but irradiated wreckage and ash. When the smoke cleared, the few of us left crawled from our shelters to the surface, and we found there a shell of the world we once knew. And on the hour that the last of us emerged, we turned our eyes skyward. The sky opened, and judgment came once more. From the rift again sounded the golden trumpets and from the void exhumed a harrowing swarm of flies. Amid the swarm came a frail and black steed, withering to its bones and shallow in its breath. And upon it rode a gaunt man with a mane of white. 
In his one slender hand, he held a divine fruit rotten to its core, and from it wafted the airs of starvation. In his other, he held up a golden scale to weigh the thinning shares. In the finest wisp of breath, he spoke into the world of man. I am the second of four. By his decree, I bring the blight of hunger. From the loam shall no crop be raised. For your toil of hatred, hate salted the earth. Not from the stalks of flesh shall you sustain. For their grass lay trampled and ruined. From what grain shown shall you never reap. For the gold harvest doth turn the dust of the winds of war. And ever shall the fair of your tamed lands and wilds be denied unto you. So it shall be, for I am called Famine. With this second coming did the people despair, and we foraged for what little food may have weathered the war path. All of nature had suffered the wrath of the cannon fire, the fallout and debris, but we had been merciless to one another, only in the farthest reaches of the blast zones. The lesser touched lands along the war path did we find the last left to sustain us. So many had found shelter too near ground zero. Most did not survive the trek. Most succumbed to noxious radiation. And they died whereupon they fell. Some fell in burden to their waning needful and dying. And some took their own lives. What few remained found their prize at the cost of their health and living years, and for so little. We found only the few cans and containers left behind in raids, and the scarce remaining scraps from broken wards of the dead or dying too weak to defend their keep. A scant find too seldom upon miles of barren road, and we took in secret, and we hoarded with false promise to ration we let others starve, that we might eat. When the shops and home ran dry, we took of Karen and small disease and wilting things. But stomachs turned and rejected sour poisons, and yet more fell to their failing bodies. And we grew weak. We grew ill. And so we ushered in another age of the end. Upon a fateful hour did the sky fall asunder once more, and our judgment rode forth once more. Again sounded the voices of angels and golden trumpets, and from the void exhumed the ash of the burning dead and the foul stench of decay. From the acrid cloud rode a white horse patched in red and greens of dying flesh. Its eyes clouded in ailments, and its teeth blackened with rot, and upon it, on an infirm, cavalier stricken with the boils and lesions of disease. In his hands held the wafting flames of a cleansing pre, and in a wheezing rasp, as he declared unto the world of man, I am the third four, and by his decree do bring the blight of illness. The filth of your careless abandon shall be upon you. The last moving things of the earth shall bring your poisons unto you from their burrows, and they shall be as a venom of your lifeblood, and the tainted airs rot in battle shall pierce the flesh and last upon your bones. Your breath shall be the dust of the plague, <laughs> and shall fester 
and fade until the end of days. So it shall be, for I am called Pestilence. That hour marked our descent into profound and all-encompassing plague. There were no troves of food left to us, and none had the strength left to search. We had settled for nearby rats and insects, and only those our constitution could withstand. When even those grew too few, more and more resorted to cannibalism. Not a bite without disease, but for longing to settle the twisting pain in our stomachs. When the sickness came for us, it was our children and elders who went first. Some were lost to the desperation of the hungry, but most were taken by the fever. Though it wasn't too long before we envied them, for their deaths were swift and merciful compared to the agony yet to come. Soon, it was we who ate who suffered the most. The dead passed through the stomachs of the living, and through those yet living, did the infection grow stronger and violent. The fever took hold of with a ceaseless itch, the seething burn. Then came the sores, and pustles, boils, and the stench of necrosis, and the infection twisted and spoiled the flesh, and even the most preserved of meals turned unfit to eat. The voracious plague claimed the lives of many and confined yet more to their beds, and few survived. The whole of the world of men fell into decay so that few were left, but the strongest of the young, and for those remaining, came the last portent of our judgment. Again did the sky fall open to the void. And again came the sound of singing angels and golden trumpets. From the void stormed forth the dark legions of hell and fallen angels. And they did scream and wail their sorrow. And ahead of them rode a pale horse, skinless in face and naked of teeth. And its breath was the white mist of the ether. Upon it sat the reaper himself, veiled in black robes, and charred feathers molted from his broken wings. In his one hand did he hold a scythe to harvest the souls of men, and in, in the other, an hourglass of all time, and the sands had since passed, and in a voice whispered from graves and shadows. This he declared unto the world of man. I am the last of four. By his degree do I bring the blight of the end. So shall your illness and your loathsome deeds be cast upon you in your final years. Every womb shall be barren, every seed hollow of its essence. The meager few shall vanish to their last, and lordship over all the earth shall be taken forever and from each of the fallen shall their souls be given unto Azrael the archangel, and in his hand shall each be delivered to its final rites. So it shall be, for I am called Death. And just as the three horsemen before him, he was true to his word, for not a single child has been born to even the healthiest of us in over thirty years. We have all since grown old and feeble, and another of us falls each day, whisked away to the hereafter by the archangel of death. Among the sickness and our tainted meals, I can only assume that we've survived so long that we might reflect on our sins. I can only assume we have been left to learn some divine lesson I huddle now beside others like me, 
near the warmth of the garbage can fire. There are fewer here today than yesterday. Fewer still than a week ago. And I believe this last may yet be nearing an end. As I see friends and family pass on, I feel myself losing feeling for my loss. I move ever closer to acceptance, and I feel it in my heart now. My time nears, too. Perhaps tomorrow, some other in my place may recant this story so often told. Perhaps next week, some other may tell her final tale to the sullen faces around this fire. And the rest shall remember it at the end of their days. For in a world without a future, what is there to do but remember? Mine cry.